This is no ordinary laptop. At least, I don't think it is. Certainly not the ordinary laptop that you would find from the likes of HP. Now, it's just here in this nondescript FedEx box, but I can assure you that I've been looking forward to actually covering this for well over a month now. I've seen so much buzz around, like on social media about this thing. I haven't watched any reviews or really looked up any information on it because I wanted to keep this a little bit fresh, but I've seen people just excited for it. And so am I. Ah, uh, yeah. If you've ever seen anything by System76, you will immediately recognize this. This is a launch keyboard, actually. It's along with a HP mouse. The HP 935 Creator Wireless Mouse. Okay, I've never used one of these. I'm not sure if it's any good, but I do know the launch is pretty good. This is a configurable keyboard. You can configure it from basically the key switches, the key caps, and the firmware completely 100% configurable. It comes with, I think, QMK by default. I'm not 100% sure on that off the top of my head, but I think it's QMK compatible. I know this is what I'm supposed to be looking at, but like it came with all this other stuff. So let's get the HP mouse out of here. The box isn't super heavy, so I'm not sure if that's an indicator of quality in lightness or an indicator of lack of quality in lightness. Oh, actually, it's, it feels okay in the hand. It's actually sculpted really well. It feels a little bit like an MX Master. This is the HP Dev 1. Oh yeah. So this is actually really nice packaging. It kind of sort of reminds me of... No, it doesn't remind me of Apple. It reminds me of like Microsoft Surface or something. This is very much more HP's speed. Power cord. Where's the adapter in here? Yeah, there we go. And that's about all you get in there. Before I toss this aside, let's see what they have in here. And a super simple setup. You plug it in, you power it on, you connect to network. That's it, you're done. And here's the laptop itself. That is really nice looking. It's not like super duper thin, and I don't think they're going for that either. It's got like a kind of a wedge shape, and basically that means that you're, you're getting a, a tilt on the desk, so it's easier for you to use for typing if you prefer having a, a raised typing surface. The camera is right there. There are two holes for what I believe are microphones. We have a track point. We've got a nipple right there. It feels really good, actually. This one is kind of like indented, so your finger kind of sits in it, and it makes it actually a lot easier to push in any direction. You have dedicated buttons for the touchpad, and the touchpad itself still clicks, so you can do both. This is kind of a problem. If you were to use this for navigating, I'm not sure how much I like that. Actually, no, it's kind of, it's kind of okay. Because I can use my middle finger to do up and down, and my other fingers next to it to use uh, side by side. So maybe I could get used to that. Now on the left side for IO, we have a security lock, Kensington lock connector. We got two USB, I believe these are 3.x ports. Yeah, that's a combo headphone and microphone jack for headsets. And on the other side, we've got barrel jack for power, which is eh, fine. Full-size HDMI and two USB Type-C ports. Now, I don't think these are Thunderbolt. They don't have a Thunderbolt connection label next to them. Both of these Type-Cs are 10 gig with power delivery and display port. For developers, Thunderbolt isn't super useful. Overall, it's a very solid feeling laptop. It's got a nice finish to it and everything is, I would say, pretty spot on for what you would want. So let's power it on and get into it. But first, I'm gonna to talk to you about our sponsor, Linode. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is a cloud computing service that's affordable and easy to use. Check out their large marketplace of one-click apps to quickly deploy servers for games like Counter-Strike or Terraria, or host your own website with easy WordPress and Drupal integrations. All plans are bundled and have monthly caps, so there are no hidden fees. Best of all, Linode has worldwide data centers and 24-7 human support. With all this, it's easy to see why Linode is the top-rated infrastructure as a service provider on G2. Create a free account today and get $100 60-day credit at linode.com slash short circuit. Oh, the power is on the right-hand side. That's a little strange. But honestly, that's not that big a deal because it's a, it's a right angle connector, so you're not likely to ever run into it. Having the Type-C ports and HDMI port especially here is a little strange. HP, oh, that looks like a nice display. But here we are in Pop! OS. Yeah, this is an HP laptop with Pop! OS. 
This is a System76 and HP collaboration. It's kind of weird when you think about it because System76, they have their own laptops, like the Oryx Pro and the Lemur and all the other ones that they have. Why are they partnering with HP? Well, one of the things that most Linux users will tell you is a problem in the Linux world is that you just can't find very many Linux computers that have Linux on them out of the box. In this case, Pop! OS is an operating system that is very widely recommended and one that I'm pretty familiar with myself and I kind of really like. Also, I really like this screen. Is it a touch screen? It is not a touch screen. Okay, fair enough, I guess. Touch screen would probably be better because I know touch screen is a thing you can do in Linux. The Steam Deck has it and it's actually kind of useful sometimes. It's got kind of everything you want here. And that's that's really the charm of Linux in general is that you can do what you want with it. And ideally that's what you're going to be doing with the HP Dev one as well. Now, unlike a normal System76 laptop, I don't think that the firmware on the machine itself is fully open source. The management engine is probably not disabled. You probably don't have core boot. You probably don't have the ability to remap the keyboard here, but that's what the launch is for. So that's kind of what you have to deal with in terms of what you're not getting from System76 versus HP here. All right, let's set this up and I'll get screen recording going. Full disk encryption out of the box. That's something that you get with Pop! OS. They, they just automatically tell you, hey, you should probably do this. And they have the check mark enabled by default. Very useful for laptops, especially. If this were Linus, this would have blown up by now. There's still time. While it was booting up here, I just realized there's a little sticker on here that tells you how to operate the camera shutter. So there's a little camera shutter here that you can barely even see. It's like part of the, the bezel around it, but there's a little gap in the bezel here and you can slide this shutter over. And when you do that, you enable and disable the webcam by physically covering it. Great. We are set up. Welcome to Pop! OS, dock extension. Yeah, let's just do the center dock here. Date and time, I'll throw that to the right. I like that. And there we go. They're not asking you if you want to give them your advertising ID and stuff. Like, I, I, I don't need to evangelize Linux here, but this is just the experience of setting up this laptop. And uh, yeah, analytics. Okay, so this, this is different. Normally, analytics are not a thing that System76 or really anybody when you install Linux will ask you for, but they actually show you. <laughs> here we go. They tell you what data they're sending. They're, se they're showing you how it's formatted here. They're gonna get your screen height and width, the type of port that it's in, okay. The Linux kernel revision. So basically hardware information about your computer as well as the software environment. It doesn't look like it's super identifiable. So it's not like sending your usernames and passwords and stuff to HP. Like you can tell what exactly is being sent to them, which I understand that this level of granularity is a little bit more than most people are willing to look at. But for a developer laptop, this is exactly what you want to show them. Analytics can also be things like, how often do you use certain features? They can tell what features they should actually continue to implement and iterate on versus, you know, just kind of fumbling around in the dark and not really knowing. There we go, we're in Pop! OS. Let's go ahead and hit it with some Crab Rave. Also, the keyboard feels perfectly fine. The track point, I just realized I haven't touched, but it also feels perfectly fine. I feel like I have a pretty good degree of control. It's not as fine control as the touchpad is, but it's faster control. And again, the keyboard seems fine. The stabilization on the keys seems pretty spot on. Yeah, I can push right on the corner there and it just goes right down. This whole thing is made of metal. The only way that I can get it to flex really is if I like really, really wrench on it like that. Like under normal circumstances, you're not gonna get any flex. Oh, that's an interesting sound effect. I feel like it has some kind of spatial effect tuning for the speakers because I, I, I heard that from like way over here. Spatially, it, it sounds very full. Very wide, I mean. Okay, so the bass doesn't go super deep, but it's also like, I don't feel there's any distortion or anything like that. Like it all, it all sounds very smooth which is good. So it, it feels very balanced, well-tuned speakers. And there's no special software drivers or anything like that going on here. It's just straight up stock Linux. Now that's not to say that there may not be something in the firmware doing this or some other kind of tuning. You can't really see how bright this is, but it is bright. Yeah, like that is super bright. Apparently it gets to a thousand nits. It looks really good. 
Viewing angles are not amazing, but I think that's a feature. In this case, I think it's actually like a privacy screen. Because like if I show you this off to the side here and then move it over. As, as far as LCDs go that aren't like QD OLED or anything like that, or just Quantum Dot in general, I feel like this is pretty good. Like a lot of people are gonna be looking at stuff like this, you know, the terminal, which it doesn't really matter what that looks like. A compiler or something on one side, you type your commands into and hit. But yeah, like this is the kind of thing that you would normally be looking at is just mostly walls of text. And for this, like the extra brightness definitely helps with that. And as far as accuracy goes too, like it seems like the accuracy is pretty good. Uh, but yeah, we could add a profile if we wanted to. Generally, it seems like it's pretty good, yeah. Colors pop, it looks bright. You're not gonna be doing a whole lot of color work on this anyway, but if you do, then you can use ICC profiles from like a colorimeter or what have you to automatically adjust all that. Right off the bat, it looks like it's a pretty decent looking webcam in terms of sharpness. Uh, it might be a little bit blown out with this lighting. Yeah, it could be this lighting. Yeah, it's definitely the lighting. If I cover my face, and give me in some shade, it's less blown out. It looks like the details are actually pretty good. I don't know what the microphones sound like, so you guys are hearing this for the first time. But overall, like this is actually a really good webcam and I can uh, say goodbye just like this. Woo. Yeah, that, uh, when, you, when you uncover the webcam after it being in darkness, it's, uh, whoa. Let's turn it off and take it apart. I want to see what I can upgrade in here. Where are my torques at? There they are. Perfect. These are captive. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. You don't even have to worry about which of these screws goes where. No, nope, it just comes off. Okay. Nice. We've got a rather interesting... Oh, wow. This is actually really well laid out. We've got a nice big battery here, which tells us exactly where those screws go that hold it in. We've got the wireless module here, which is a... Uh, they got a HP sticker on it, so I don't know. Can I pull this out? Yeah, I can. There we go. Nice! We have two SODEM slots, and they are both occupied. We've got 16 gigs of RAM here. The CPU is a Ryzen Pro 5850U. That's an 8-core, 16-thread processor with a 4.4 gigahertz max boost. And we have a 1 terabyte. NVMe module, which I presume is under here. These shields have handy little pull tabs that I can just pull it up like that. Check that out. And there it is. It's a full-size regular NVMe port. Oh, I love it. It's so good. And then the cooler is right here. You can probably just pull this off after getting these screws out. Yeah, this is very serviceable. These ports on the side are on their own PCBs, it looks like. Even the power jack is on its own. It's not on a PCB. It's actually there with a wire coming off of it. Thank you. So often, those power jacks come off the board. That's why USB Type-C charging has kind of been a godsend. But if you're gonna do a barrel jack, do it like this. Have it anchored into the chassis and then have a wire coming off of it. That way you can't fatigue it out of place. Oh, this is, this is good. This speaks to me. I guess the only thing that would make it better is if HP were to release the specs, like the, the board specs, which unfortunately, as we know from many, many vendors, is actually difficult to do because of all the, the legalese with that. But I really like this. I really like the fact that they didn't go thin for the sake of being thin. They have everything modular. They have... In my opinion, a good choice of operating system. 1100 US dollars? Oh, wow. Could this be my next laptop? Okay, so it probably doesn't come with the launch keyboard, which is like $200 or so on its own. For $1100, like what Apple's selling for $1100? And yeah, it's thinner. And yeah, it's got M2 or whatever. Man, this is so much more versatile, in my opinion. It's, it's almost not even a contest. I've got a Linux desktop at home, and I feel like this would uh, would pair really nice with it. With it, the Steam Deck is already pairing very nicely with my Linux desktop, so I don't know. Oh, I forgot to put this back in. Ha! Huh, well, all this is in here for is for RF shielding. It's not actually contacting anything. There aren't any heat pads or anything like that. It's just RF shielding, so I can leave it out if I wanted to. It's just for FCC compliance. And this is for you for having come here and watched this entire episode of Short Circuit. Thank you for watching and make sure you watch other Short Circuits. There's previous System76 laptops, there's the Apple MacBook Air, 
that uh, I just compared this to because it's similar in price, although this is much chunkier. And yeah, there's plenty of other stuff. So make sure you get subscribed and thanks for watching.